But first, the debate over wind farms and their potential for harm is heating up, with the Federal Senate launching an inquiry. Already, South Australia's approval guidelines for turbines have been brought into question, and the Senate committee hasn't even arrived here yet. I'm minded of the tobacco companies 50 years ago testifying to a committee somewhat similar like ours saying <laughs> um, cigarettes do not cause lung cancer. Each turbine gets around $300,000 a year from the federal government. That's a lot of money. And I'm concerned that this could be pink pats in the air, if you like. This is Cape Bridgewater. It's a place most Australians haven't heard of. Six hours east of Adelaide, four and a half hours west of Melbourne, in southwest Victoria. But it is fast becoming a talking point around the world. Not because of its beauty and seclusion, but because of these. Cape Bridgewater, as far as wind farms go, is not unlike hundreds of others around the world. But it has become the epicentre of world debate around the safety of wind farms to human health. It's Sunday night, and in this secluded farmhouse, a very important meeting is taking place. They behave like a giant tuning fork every time the blade goes past and it vibrates down through the concrete, uh, I'm imagining through the bedrock. And it... it mightn't look like it, but the future of the wind energy industry in Australia and possibly the world could be in the hands of these people. These are just four of the federal senators looking into the possible harm these turbines may cause to people living close by. At the centre of the debate is this man, Mr Stephen Cooper, and the residents in these three homes which border the Cape Bridgewater wind farm. It's noisy, it's terrible, you can't sleep. At the moment it feels as if it's a losing battle because of the way we've been treated subsequent to the test. The test is what has sparked the controversy. Last year, for 10 weeks, sound engineer Stephen Cooper looked for a link between the Cape Bridgewater wind farm and sensations residents in three of the nearest homes were saying made them feel sick. And he found one. And that's actually the critical aspect that people right around the world, and, and there is an acknowledgement that this study, by having the cooperation of wind farm and the residents, and to do the on-off testing, is a matter that's never been done before in the world. What this study did was identify infrasound, sound that is below a level that can be heard but can be felt, was being emitted from the Cape Bridgewater wind farm and detected by nearby residents. Noise didn't fit into what was occurring because right. they weren't hearing it, no. they were perceiving. So um, we added in vibration as a separate distinction because residents were reporting vibration that they could feel through the floor or experiencing. Mr Cooper calls it a wind turbine signature and now it's been identified it means further studies can be conducted to see if there is a causal link between turbines and health impacts. The fundamental problem that you have in looking at the issue of wind farms is that there hasn't been health studies and so the health studies are not there to show either an impact or no impact. It's turned Stephen Cooper and his work into a political football, with many trying to tear him down. Allegations put to the Senate Review Committee suggest Pacific Hydro, which owns the Cape Bridgewater wind farm and funded the study, was now trying to gag Mr Cooper. I mean, I find it extraordinary that you can't use your own charts. I mean, can I just clarify? So if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation overseas, you can't copy and paste a chart out of your report and put it on a slide? If it's in this published document, I've been advised I can't. Andrew Richards is from Pacific Hydro. Senator Canavan um, raised the issue that um, you've gagged other people. Um, is this common practice for Pacific Hydro? No, we haven't gagged anyone. Um, what we have in contracts is the protection of intellectual property and, and rights of people. The restrictions on Stephen Cooper, however, are all just a misunderstanding. Did they make that clear in the last fortnight that you could not reproduce parts of that report? Um, yes, it, although it has changed today. But Mr Cooper's issues don't end there. They've decided to review his review. Have you engaged an acoustic expert at this stage? Yes, we have. OK, who is that? 
Um, not at liberty to say. But there, there is a, a report that's been produced. It's, it's been uh, provided to us in the coming days, and that will make that publicly available. Okay. And is that measuring infrastructure as well as DBA? It's more, it's more of an assessment of the data that's been collected uh, in the way that Mr Cooper has, has, has got peer review. So it's a hatchet job, basically? No. <laughs> but Pacific Hydro may have a hard time convincing many of the members of the committee, like so Senator Matt Canavan. Doesn't that go to the core of the issue, though, Mr Reg Richards, that there's a new technique now and, and, and some new information? So I'm, I'm interested to know what are you doing as a company who, who operate wind turbines um, as a result of this, this new information? What further studies well, or investigations? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. And Senator Chris Back. As, as a company, all we can do is look at the peak medical associations and organisations. None of them are saying that this is, a, this is an issue. Um, we do look to the NHMRC who are, have, are about to conduct some work in this area and we're quite supportive of that to try and deal with this issue once and for all. Can I just interrupt? The President of the Australian Medical Association disassociated himself from that statement, didn't he? I'm not sure if he, he did. did. And Senator John Lynham. If I was in your shoes, I would be concerned that in due course there would be a tort liability emerge out of this. Especially since a study at a United States wind farm at Shirley in Oregon found infrasound was harming nearby residents, as acknowledged by Senator John Madigan. Thank you. So, as I understand it, at the Shirley wind farm, a lesser level that was recorded there was considered a public health risk. Is that right? That's what the report says, yes. Thank you, Mr Cooper. But Senator Anne Urquhart is not convinced. A former union leader, many of her former members are shareholders via their super funds in Pacific Hydro. Is it right that you have a history of appearing in court cases for wind opponents and casting aspersions on the academic research which shows that there's no evidence of health impacts of wind turbines? I think you're achieving with that sort of question. But it's not just wind farms Stephen Cooper's research makes vulnerable. With the Senate inquiry next set to visit South Australia, the EPA here can expect some tough questions. Are you saying that the South Australian EPA guidelines are fundamentally flawed in considering these types of applications? Yes, um, I've, I've detailed that in my submission. Under EPA guidelines here, wind farms that operate correctly shouldn't even produce infrasound. But other studies show that's impossible. I've measured infrasound from the Waterloo wind farm at eight kilometres. Adelaide University, um, during a shutdown at Waterloo, measured the Hallett wind farm, which was something in the order of 30 kilometres away. What next? Well, residents at Cape Bridgewater, like Sonia Trist, who lives just 620 metres from a turbine, believes it's time for a health study. I personally want to be able to, to live in my home. That's what I want. That's my top of my hit list. It's like a pressure. It's like a big cloud or a heaviness is over us. Um, and it just gets stronger and stronger. It's like my head's in a vice. Brian and Joanne Kernond, whose family have lived at Cape Bridgewater for generations, are desperate for answers. Brian's adamant the turbines have done something to him. The evidence that uh, Mr Steve Cooper's study has provided relieves my wife and I that we are sane and our claims are legitimate. We knew that there was a problem right from the start when, we, and when our family was declining in health. And while this is not the first Senate inquiry into wind farms, they're hopeful this one will finally ask the right questions and get some reliable answers. Well, my hope is that they'll leave here understanding more about what we're being exposed to. What have other wind farms around the world said to you about allowing him to do this? Have they said to you, what the hell were you thinking? Well, some have. Some have congratulated us. Um, I think we feel as though we have nothing to hide with this and, in fact, we believe that everyone will benefit from additional work in this area because we can't continue to go on as an industry or as a company with, with people making these sorts of accusations.